Greetings, and welcome to Channel Other Doc. I am Jim, your friendly Lacuna GM. I use he, him pronouns, and this is the third development mode session of our Invisible Sun campaign, The Edge of Paradox. Um, we have, again, this is a one-on-one -on -one session, um, and uh, we're going to uh, uh, have uh, be spending some time with Shah Gamelon, sort of figuring out kind of what uh, uh, what she wants to, to do, and... Uh, just uh, doing doing a bunch of that. Uh, <laughs> he says very we're, specifically. We're super organized today. <laughs> <laughs> Organization, yay! Um, so yes, uh, 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 Janaya, go ahead and if you, you would introduce yourself, say. Yeah, Hello, know. my name is Janaya, and I use she/her pronouns, and I play Shah Gamelon, an established gallant of the Order of Makers who cages adversaries. Um, and Shah uses she/them pronouns. Um, yeah, and I'm not entirely sure how development sessions work, but you know we're gonna figure this out all together. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, by and large, for the most part, um, when we do development mode, um, we are primarily just using the sooth deck. We're not really rolling much, but uh, one of the major exceptions to that is if you actually want to make something. Um, we, we can engage with rolls. I mean, you know, and it's, it's really... Last time, uh, 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 last development mode session I did was with Anino, as with uh, Mac the Husk, and there were some things he, he kind of felt he needed to roll for, so I was like, yeah, go ahead and roll. So, I mean, you can, we, can, we can do whatever we want. Um, <clears throat> that's really what it comes down to. Um, but let me go ahead and uh, put this out there uh, before we start this up. Uh, like we do with most games on this channel, we are still using uh, the X card, the N card, and the O card. Uh, so if we hit uh, a uh, something that is crossing a line for Janiya, she can type an X in the Zoom video chat or anywhere else, or make an X symbol, and we'll back up and we'll do something else. Uh, if something happens that uh, you're okay having in the game, but you don't want a graphic description of it, you can type an N in the Zoom chat and we'll fade to black on it or we'll put it behind a veil. So it'll be there, but we won't go into detail. Uh, finally, if you're exploring a topic or area of roleplay that's particularly intense for you, but you want to keep going, uh, you can put an O in the chat to let us know that you're okay and that we're good to keep piling on the drama. Uh, something else we can do is we can put an O with a question mark on, after it if either of us, uh, if we're moving into a difficult topic or either of us says or does something and then think, maybe that might have been a little too much, uh, then, uh, then uh, whoever does that, the other can respond to just sort of let us uh, know if we're still doing okay. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and get into this. Now, um, what, uh, so when we, we kind of left the, uh, the last session at the party, and I've said you can come and go from the party if you like, um, or if you'd prefer, we can have this take place earlier, or we can have this take place later. Um, so what, what would you like to do at this point? That's a really good question. I think it depends on where we want to push in with this, as mm -hmm. far as, uh, Shaw's direction. So... I, I know that she's trying to look for who, where her new home is. Um, she was a soldier in shadow while well, she was a, a military medic in shadow. And she kind of feels a need for a place of belonging, which she has not found here. Um, but she also kind of needs to continue pushing on where she's going with the makers. So um, I think she wants to, especially because she just had that run in with Gilda at the party. Mm -hmm. I think that that would make her feel like she has an opportunity through that pretty good conversation with Gilda um, to elevate herself further with the bankers. So she's like, maybe I should make something. So I don't know. Maybe she would excuse herself from the party, um, especially since she's not entirely sure that it's not plunging from the sky into uh, into whatever lies beneath or about to collide into a shopping mall. And I, and I also think the fact that it was in shadow that she was seeing the sun from shadow made them incredibly nervous. Like, just because I, I think that she really worries that she's too in control of everything to be 
in the actuality, and so she's always worried, worried about being pulled back. So she mm. might be looking for an excuse to leave this party, which could be like, well, I have to go work. Yeah, yeah. And that's perfectly fine. I, I think, um, if, if nothing else, um... Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And anyone there will kind of understand. Any of the makers just, they get seized with these needs to do, to, to work on something. Um, and uh, I'll say that the party itself uh, has a lot of different, even layers to it. So there are like other floors one can explore if one desires as one is trying to get, get out of the building. Uh, but let me just. Just for the sake of me knowing, um, and I, as I think this is something that would probably be of interest to Shah, I'm going to do a draw uh, to kind of see what sort of terrain you come back through. Uh, <laughs> because I think that's, that's going to be helpful. Oh, goodness. Okay. Um, so we're starting out. Um, if the card will come up for us here. Hmm. Let's make the card come up. All right, there we go. And don't capture the cursor, but we're good. Okay, good, there we go. The card that has come up uh, is the Messiah. Uh, that is the Defender of Visions. And its meanings are change, salvation, and familial love. Um, many fear change, others embrace it eagerly. Uh, often, not always, but often, the former live happy and satisfying situations, while the latter do not. Uh, in other words, change is a salvation that not everyone needs. The Messiah is the defender of the Vision's family. She defends by changing the things that threaten or menace. As a defender, the Messiah is particularly concerned with families and the bonds of love that exist there. In divination, first and foremost, the Messiah portends change. The source of the change is almost certainly external to the person in question. More often than not, this is a positive change, and in fact, the worst things are for, are for the person, the more likely that the change will be positive. The Messiah can indicate the involvement of a beloved family member like a parent or a sibling. This involvement is not always positive. Um, so, yeah, would you, would you say that... Uh, Shah enjoys uh, rolling with the punches, or that Shah wants things to remain the same? I am barely asking Actually, this question. I think I know the answer to this, but go yeah, ahead. She, she, as a hobby, she grows perfectly, like, geometrically shaped fruit. I think that she feels really serious about no change. Like, she really works very hard to structure her life into a very predictable fashion. Excellent. Even in the actuality. I gotta open. I gotta open something real quick, because uh, I just want a a quick little little bit of information here about the sun you're going to pass through as you're coming back. Now remember, you're not really there. The way that they uh, said that this party works, you're co-located, so you're actually sort of you've got a window into it. That does include physicality, but you're still really in the indigo. Um, so let's see. Yep, 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 yep. All right. So let's see, where would a party be taking place there? Uh, that's the important thing, is that the party has to be taking place. Um, Okay. Oh, actually. No, this is better. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You're um, scaring me. <laughs> so, no, no, it's all right. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. You're, you're fine. You're fine. Everything's it's great. fine. Everything's fine. Um, so, yeah. Um, As you are uh, walking through, uh, sort of, you, you come out of the um, of the the building. You you pass out basically through the French doors, um, and uh, yeah, uh, you come out and and there's this 
sort of that you see these uh, y you're walking out onto a path um, and the grass is swaying back and forth on either side of the path kind of almost you can still hear the music in on inside mm -hmm. and so this is kind of like you're in one of those uh, like cartoons from the 20s and 30s where the grass <laughs> is kind of bopping along yeah, to the music this is like the everything is dancing trope basically Got it. Um, and uh, as you're sort of looking at it not it's not it's not cartoony per se exactly but it's it's close um, and uh, you see this you're so you're in this what looks like kind of a a public park uh, that you're walking through and the trees are swaying back and forth um, not in the way they would sway in the breeze they're 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 quite literally sort of uh, uh, kind of lombada ing with each other um, and uh, you see the the buildings around you um, are it's this very strange thing because so you're in this kind of enclosure. It looks like a uh, kind of like um, uh, co uh, some college campuses do this. Um, Oxford does this, where you have a lawn. Um, and you have sort of maybe paths through it, uh, and then you have uh, sort of the, the the shells of the buildings around it. Yes. Um, and uh, in this case, you have uh, folks. They're like you see two scaffoldings, uh, one on one, one end and one kind of over on the other, you realize, as you hear the sound of construction, and you see that um, one side is tearing down parts of the building, and then the other side is making more parts of the building. They're essentially, they're laying in bricks. Okay. Um, whilst the people in the construction outfits are continuing, uh, spirits, you think, in construction outfits, um, are, uh, are actually... Um, sort of again bopping along to the music um, and uh, so everything here is in motion uh, the the path itself possibly also you see it kind of not it's it's swaying a little more subtly mm. uh, you kind of look up and the sun is golden all right is it sort of beating down uh, there are people uh, sort of on the lawn, uh, sort of running back and forth. There is, strangely enough, there is also barbecuing going on here, which was going on also uh, when this building was projected into the gray. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it, it has, in fact, moved. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that she walks under the lawn and she had been striding with some confidence out of the party um and i think as she gets to this part and everything's moving she sort of steps back and um kind of we see her cover her mouth a little bit like it's just kind of motion sick almost for a second then she puts out her hands and steadies herself takes a deep breath and um i'm gonna look around and see is there an i mean did the buildings go all the way around am i totally enclosed or is there an obvious path through there, there's an opening um there's a uh, there, there there's an opening on either end um very wide kind of archway okay um i think i'll walk about halfway try to walk about halfway across um, keeping an eye on the people who are building and the people who are deconstructing um, just because how things go together and how things come apart is sort of infinitely fascinating. Yeah. Um, and uh, unless something in particular catches my eye, I'm going to try to walk all the way across to the exit. Okay. Um, carefully. Um, as as you're, you're heading across, uh, it's not too tricky um it's just it's this thing where everything is in motion and it's not uh everything's in transition uh basically here um and it is kind of weird there's like a there's like a fruit tree 
that does kind of catch your attention because it's the fruits are like growing and ripening and dropping off very rapidly. Oh, cool. Right. Um, and then rejoining the ground, and so it's one of those things. And but it's oddly enough, n new fruit trees aren't springing up immediately around it, so it's not immediately like instant forest. Um, so the cycle doesn't appear to be sped up in that way. Um, it's like the champagne fountain of fruit trees. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Similar principle, it seems. Um, and there are a couple of folks like like standing under it, and they like well occasionally. And a few, few folks actually wandered out from the party as well. Um, that are like reaching over and like like catching the fruit in their uh, in in their hands and their 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 or their. They've, they've, their, their shirts or whatever, and they're quickly trying to eat them before they decompose. Uh. <laughs> huh. Um, I think I'll walk over and look at the fruit tree, uh, just because I'm curious about the fact that removing the thing from the tree doesn't cause it to be removed from the cycle, you know? Yeah, they're they're trying to figure it out, but you know most of them are just it's like a, a game for the people like a couple people under the tree right now. So they're okay. And they're like hey, hey. Ah. and it, <laughs> they look like they look like pears. Oh, she'll reach out and grab one of the pears off the tree, um, like right before it's at ultimate ripeness, and. And then she'll just watch it in her hand as it kind of goes into decomposition. Like, wipe it off. So, yeah, as you're watching it, and actually, it looks as though it's starting to turn slightly reddish as it's starting to do so. And then it's decomposing. Um, and you look up and you see that the pears seem to be turning into... Um, the pears seem to be turning into apple-like things. Oh. Um, I need to pull up the exotic fruit table again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that I have Im so I have images of them. Um, but yeah, so it looks like they're 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 turning into things that are like apples and uh, okay. right now slowly as this um. cycle continues. And the pears are evolving into huh. pseudo pears. Pseudo pears. Yes. Um. I think then she'll try to pick one again and see if she can take a bite out of it while it's right. Okay. Yeah, you manage it. It's not actually too tricky because I, th I think you get the pattern like like that um, pretty much. So you, you pull it down and you're like, yeah, and it's, it tastes, um, it's actually not bad. Uh, it's very ripe. It's um, kind of, yeah, it, this, this, I, I'd, I'd say this would go somewhere in the pomegranate box interesting basically it's kind of pomegranate right now the a pair yes like an au pair but different that's right <laughs> it's like an au pair but you have to do everything for it <laughs> okay um i think that she'll figure that she's kind of unlocked whatever she can unlock here and kind of look at the people and be a little awkward and head back to the path. Keep heading through. <laughs> You're like, oh, that's very good. That's good. And uh, as you kind of, uh, do you do you try to take any with you or are you just going to? Uh... Well, I mean, if, if I pull one and I walk far enough away from the tree, does it still decompose? Uh, once you get back on the path, it stops. Ooh. Um, I, I think she'll try to take well, she'll do two things. One is she will pick one and let it decompose in her hand and pluck out the seeds. Ooh. And she'll put the seeds in her pouch, like her little bag. Um, and then she'll grab two of them and walk away from the tree with the two ripe ones. Hopefully, Excellent. like as differently looking as she can um okay yeah so if you if you want to like pick pick one down and then like set it aside near the yeah. near the path and then come back yeah um so yeah the one that you have 
uh, you you grab first looks um, a bit more yeah look looks more kind of like a um, what did I say uh, <laughs> it's the fruit I said it was turning into oh my god an apple uh, something kind of uh, sort of yeah, was looking at pomegranate pomegranate it looks more like a pomegranate okay. um, and then the second one is actually ends up as more like a persimmon oh uh, so it's kind of orange or a little rounder, and it's got, like, little uh, green fluffy things at the top. Uh, oh. Stem area. Cool. Um, and uh, so you've got, yeah, what essentially are a, a, a pomegranate and a persimmon type thing. Awesome. Um, and you've got seeds uh, that are kind of in transition, so it'll, it'll be probably, if you plant them, it'll probably grow something that's like a cross between those two things. Neat. <laughs> um, I think she'll be very excited to take those home. So, uh, so she'll kind of look around at the rest of the building and and start heading her way back through the path. Okay, so you uh, you head out uh, through the archway, um, and yeah, you see several. Um, as you're coming out, it looks like it's a thing not unlike a college campus. Um, you see several buildings that are kind of actually a couple of buildings that look uh, that that look uh, remind you a little bit of the uh, of the tower next to your house um, oh. because they are it's like bricks are kind of disappearing and reappearing in other places and sections are shifting um, almost like. A couple of these books, they're almost like the, these books. A couple of these buildings, they're kind of like Rubik's Cubes almost in the way they're moving. Uh, where like middle section is turning and the top section is turning. Um, nothing from top down. Uh, it always seems to be just a lateral movement. Um, as you're sort of watching it. And that's happening very slowly as these sections of building are turning. Um, and after a few minutes, you're going to... Eventually, you're, you're, as you're looking around, you're going to see um, that uh, un, sort of off to the side, um, at the base of this statue, there's this um, there's this high, there's this pedestal, a big sort of pedestal, and then this statue atop it um, that uh, actually looks. Let me let me pull that up. Where is it? There it is. Um, Very tall uh, uh, female figure dressed in a big headdress, a long flowing gown, um, and uh, the it's a statue, but it is moving. Uh, the the Gross. garments are like flowing, and uh, she just keeps turning her head. She's sort of rotating, she's sort of turning her head and looking around at everyone and everything. And just sort oh. Of, you know. Is she rotating yeah. at the same speed that the buildings are rotating? Um, a little bit, uh, a little bit faster. Um, but uh, my point is that the base of this, uh, at, in front of the pedestal, set into it is the doorway uh, that... Um, you came through when you entered the beach. Oh, wonderful. Um, I will head towards the statue pedestal. Okay. So you head up to it and you note the statue is slowly starting to look down in your direction as you get oh. closer. <laughs> um, I'll look up and say... Uh, good afternoon. You are not here. And it's that... actually more of sort of an echoing voice than <laughs> you are not here. That that is, it in fact somewhat true. I I believe I'm co-located. All right. I see. Who are you? 
Uh, I am Shah Gamelon of the Order of Makers. And yourself? I am a sliver of her elegance. I shall allow it, as you are not truly here. Even though you carry a piece of this land back with you. But oh. I shall remember you for when you enter formally. Um. Am I breaking the rules? No. Okay. But. It is my duty. To try all those who wish to enter this land under this sun. You have not been here before. I, no, I, I, I haven't. I, I have not been here before. That that's true. We shall meet again, Shah Gamelon. Oh. Well, that's that's very nice. Um, sliver of her elegance. Um, it was a pleasure to meet you the first time. She puts her hand on the door handle. <laughs> and she just continues turning. Okay. <laughs> Um, and I go through the door and just close the door behind me like, oh, I'm never going back to the land of the Golden Sun again. I don't like change. I don't like weird tusks. I don't like it. <laughs> also, incidentally, as you were looking around, there were so many freaking Elderbrin in there. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, yes, you uh, you head through the door and you are... Um, you're back in the uh, you're back in the tenement, um, up on the uh, up on the ninth floor, and you can still hear kind of the thrumming coming from the other side. Okay, um, as the party goes on. Of course it does. Um, I think she'll. I'll head down the stairs, um, and I guess. My intent had been to go look for, well, I guess maybe I'll go home first and sort of take a catalog of what I have and make some plans for what I want to do mm -hmm. next. Um, and I want to get these seeds into soil. Okay. So. Very good. So you head back home. Um, you have, uh, let's see, so yeah, it's basically... So you're heading out past. I think at this point it's uh, it's night. Possibly by the time you get you you get back, it, okay. it was night. I think it was encroaching on night when you went in. So I mean that yeah. makes sense. Um, and so the the broken mirror as you pass by, there's it's it's poetry night again. Um, <laughs> and so there's a bunch of that happening. Um, you pass by, you know, through the through the through the square. You pass uh, you pass on uh, to the east, past the gardens. Uh, you pass the, the rocket in the middle of the street, um, and, uh, let me see, uh, as you're, as you're approaching your, uh, your street, uh, I must draw another card, for it is the way of things. And, uh, we shall, we shall see what is happening. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Oh, that's, that's very nice. Okay. I think we might have had this recently. Uh, this is the misunderstood beast. Um, it is the uh, it is uh, it's a notions card. Um, meanings are mistakes, gentleness, friendship, danger, and betrayal. I believe we had this uh, session or two ago. Um, so overall, it's a sort of a something is not what it seems deal. Um, uh, 
and uh, so as you are uh, kind of heading in uh, the yeah the tower you notice as you're, you're you come inside of it because you can see it before you see anything else as you're approaching your street um, yeah the tower is not moving much at all right now um, wow. and uh, you note that there is this kind of uh, smell that's again sort of a, sort of an ozonish scent um, as kind of like, and you don't actually see, you know, you look up where the birds usually are, and they're not here right now. Um, okay. but you do notice, uh, that, that, uh, that cat is sitting there, just sort of, uh, staring up at, uh, sort of the, the trees and the, sort of the, the, sort of the, the lines where they normally sit. Just kind of cocking its head. This cat that you've seen in the neighborhood before. Right. Um, I'll kind of get down and do that thing that you do when you pass a strange cat. And you go like, <coughs> to see if it'll come over. Yeah. Sort of a blue cat. And, and it just sort of glances over you. It says, hmm, what? Oh, you're that kind of a cat. I thought you were more the cat kind of a cat. I, I apologize. How rude. More of a cat? I think I would think, I would think that I'm more of a cat than most other cats that I meet. I, I'm, really. Um, I, I mean, I guess that's true. I'm just, you know, I'm, in my I'm very good at it. You're good at being a cat. That's, oh yes, that's important. Oh, it helps. It's a good coincidence, given that I am one. Yes, yes. It's good to be good at the thing that you're at. Um, do you live in the neighborhood? Oh, uh, I, I was thinking about moving in, uh, possibly. I, uh, I don't really have a home neighborhood right now, but I was, I was thinking about it. Uh, I liked the I, I was hoping the buffet would be back, but it is not. Oh, have you been eating the birds? Is that not what they're for? Um... No, not really. I mean, I, I guess that is kind of what birds are for. I have eaten some birds as well in my life, but... Like thinking of the dove I just shot and ate for lunch, <laughs> but but you know the the birds just sort of live in the trees, and when they're happy, they make the whole neighborhood smell really nice. Yes. Oh, yes. Right. Oh. Uh, I can't imagine it's not they a, would not a buffet then. Okay. I can't imagine that they would be good eating because when you started to eat them. Well, they would be scared, and then they would smell terrible, and... Oh, yes, you get, I don't you know get how a certain is. amount of this, yes. Yes. They, they did leave that. I, yeah, so, I, I did notice that. That's why I've been... Uh, I, but it's a challenge. That's why you take them by surprise. Oh. Um. Could, could I offer you, say, a... A bowl of some fish instead? Oh, sure. No, that would be that would be delightful. Thank you. Uh, all right. Let me um. Let me let me go get something for you. I'll I'll be right back. Okay. And, and she sort of rests her hands on her paws. Uh, she has kind of I forget if I said what color fur she has, um, but it's sort of a it's a sort of actually a, a bluish black. Um, oh. As you're kind of looking at it, um, and uh, so she just was, it's like looking, and so she turns around and she continues, and she goes, and she's just looking up at the tower while you're uh, while you're off. Okay, I think Shaw will go downstairs and go into the fridge and get like, you know, some leftover 
salmon and maybe some rice and put it in a bowl and take it back up um, and walk over and sit down next to the cat. Um, will this work instead of birds? Oh, 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 yes, yes, certainly. She goes and she prods the fish a little bit and just sort of looks at it. Um, and uh, as she's uh, sort of doing that, um, let me see here. I want to see if there's anything else they want me to throw. Okay. Um, as she's doing that, um, she will um, kind of kind of touch it, and she's like, okay. Oh, okay. Um, all right. And as she sort of, she looks, she puts her paw over her hand, over her eyes for a moment, and then sort of sways for a second, and then immediately lashes out and grabs one of the fish. <laughs> and just begins, you know, like sort of gnawing on it. Um, and she sees you, just sort of like, she's like, "Oh, this is good. This is very good." Oh, I'm I'm glad you like it. Oh, okay. So, uh, yes. What would you like to know? What do you mean? No, that's not what I want to know. <laughs> All right. Give me a moment. Where is the best place for me to find crafting materials to make objects of power? Well, that depends on the object. I mean, it's, it's not exactly, there's not exactly a general store for that kind of thing. She says, gesturing no. toward, in the direction of the general store. Uh, <laughs> that's here. It's such a pain, but I feel like I've gotten to the point where I want to do something outside of follow these recipes. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's uh, that. That means you want to get creative. Yes. Well, I mean, not too creative, but, but, yes. Oh goodness, yes. We can't have that. <laughs> I feel like you're making fun of me. <laughs> I mean, being too creative with an object of power is potentially very dangerous. Oh, well, if, 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 you, if you're, you know, if you're not being safe with it, certainly. I don't know that that you necessarily want to put all of creativity into that one thing, though. That's, it's, you can be creative without blowing things up. Right, that's true. That's true. So... I guess I think what I want to make is just because I want to practice doing something that's not something that the Maker's Guild handed me. I, I have this sketchbook that I kind of carry everywhere and I'm thinking that I would like to make something that's like the sketchbook, but when you open, it makes an illusion of the thing mm -hmm. that you would normally be drawing just from my mind. And then I could make mental adjustments while looking at it. So it would be like a sketchbook that I wouldn't have to sketch. But Visualization, I'm a, yes. Yes, but I'm not a paper maker. So I guess maybe I don't want it to be a book. <gasps> maybe it could be like a, a, a metal set of... Do you know what a viewfinder is? Like, there were these... There's these toys, and you, you put them up to your face, and it's like a, a picture box. And when you click it, it moves to a new picture. So right. maybe it would be something like that. Uh, but I could, it would give me a chance to visualize the thing. And then I could click the button 
and it would move to whatever change I wanted to make and keep going and then freeze where I left it. But I could also maybe go backwards. I, so it'd be like an illusion, but only for the person looking through it. Yes, yes. Um, I think they have things that look like that at the pawn shop. I was down there looking in through the window and I saw someone playing with something that looks kind of like what you're describing. Um, they, they also have some very nice uh, little bird sculptures. Uh, but, um, they, but yes, they, they, they have a, a thing that I think might be what you're talking about, a viewfinder. Yes. Well, I'd probably have to make the thing myself. I'd right. forge it myself, because yes. otherwise it's not going to be an object of power. But that would give me something to maybe work from. I need more iron. I have honey. I definitely need a stabilizer. Do you want a thing that... Hmm. Do you want a thing that will... Uh capture the light and run it through a sort of the image. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you're going to need yeah, you're going to need uh, glass. Yeah, Those maybe a or, crystal yeah, lenses. Crystal could work. Crystal could work if you can if you've got I presume you've got refinement equipment in there. I do. I do. I have many tools. Oh and I have I can I can actually just make tools. I mean, any good blacksmith starts with just a hammer and then makes everything that she needs from there. Oh, quite, quite. Well, that's that sounds like a good start. Um, so yeah, so you so you need to to find uh, ingredients for 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 that. Yes. Then. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Um, now for those of us who have ADHD. Uh, do you by any chance remember the ingredients that we discussed? <laughs> <laughs> um, crystal, uh, iron. Uh, I know that, I know from my limited perusals of the maker chapter, I definitely need a stabilizer in case I miss a roll. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, uh, I guess the question is how big of an illusion it is at that point. Yeah. Um, because, let's see, uh, if I look at the effects by level table, yeah. uh, there's a create a visual illusion the size of a person, which is level two. Um, and then there's create a visual illusion the size of a handheld object. Yeah. But... If I'm going to look through it, I would want to be able to make something bigger than a handheld object, because otherwise I can't make anything bigger. Right. Yeah. And I mean, the, the visual illusion in this case could be a just a, a smaller model. It doesn't have to be full scale, necessarily. That's true. Well, especially because she's looking through something. So, yeah. like, if you look through lenses, it appears bigger because it's right close to your face. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so maybe it's just a level one. Yeah, I think it would be a level one. I think it would only be like a level two if you wanted something that actually projects a bigger thing. Like if you wanted the, um, if you wanted sort of the sort of hologram table type deal. Uh, <laughs> right, right. Then, then that would be more of a level two thing. Um, in this case, it's just a question of the the uh, illusion, the intricacy of the illusion you're looking for. But I mean, you can get pretty decent even if it's just like just like that big. Right. Um, I mean, so, <laughs> just kind of from a meta gaming point, I mm -hmm. want it. I might want it to be level two because then you have to make two steps. We could do that. <laughs> um, well, and then also that would give it. it, it I'd, I'd say if you went at level two, that would ensure that it would have the level of detail that you were looking yeah. for, and you might be able to cycle through the different bits. Um, right. So that it gives you the effect of having it as though it were that big, but it was, but it's actually, you know, just all right there. Right. Um, and so then I can maybe, see that. And then maybe that would require two different ingredients. So I already have iron, which is a level one ingredient um, from my like initial inventory stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I would get 
crystal, which I think is a level two. Yeah, let me go ahead and flip to that. I have right here. Let's see. Crystal is level two. Yes. Um, so if you want to buy crystal, that's going to be 25 orbs, crystal orbs. Um, okay. Or if you want to hunt down crystal, we can do a thing. Um, but iron is level one. So I think you actually start with the level one ingredient, if I recall right. the, the matrix yes. correctly. Um, so... You don't have to go and get it yet, but if you would like to, there's that. Also, you could go and try, try to pick up a stabilizer. Um, and, and then do I need to have a catalyst, or is that just... Let me see here. Let me go back to the Maker Matrix. Let's see. Attempt challenge, add ingredient. Uh, I think you only have to have a catalyst if you fail the, uh, the first challenge. Oh, okay. Um, like... It's like is you add an ingredient, temp challenge, success, adding ingredient. So as ingredient level X, X now equals X plus one. Continue. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it, so the catalyst is only necessary if you do that. I think you've only got like six hours to go and get it if if you do fail. Right. Um, <laughs> so there is there is that. Um, <laughs> But, no problem. <laughs> yeah. But if you want to have it on hand ahead of time, then there's that. It's just a question um, of like knowing what you're going to need as you're kind of uh, as you're putting it together. Right. So, looking at my character sheet, I think that character sheet is closed. Um, I think that. Uh, I don't have enough money to buy crystal and buy a stabilizer and buy a catalyst. Have to. Yeah, probably need like I to. think I had eight. I had eighty-three left over, and then we bought lunch. Mm -hmm. So I have like seventy, like around seventy-five. Yeah, so you'll need to, uh, if, if you don't have enough, you'll need to seek, seek the things out that you do not wish to purchase. Right. So... What level uh, catalyst? What level? I'm sorry, what level uh, stabilizer and catalyst are we looking at? It would be like just level one or level two? I think we'll just go level... Oh, that's right. It's Sorry, go ahead. I mean, I guess I can, so this is what I could do, is I could yeah. get a stabilizer for a level one and a catalyst for level one and crystal, which is level two, mm -hmm. and that's 10, 20, 45. So I do well, have enough for that, but I don't have enough if something goes wrong at level two. Well, here's the thing about the crystal. Um, you may note that it's 25 crystal orbs. Yes. Uh, so the uh, so the oh. yeah the stabilizers right. level one stabilizers are ten glass orbs apiece. Right. Um, I think so. So crystal orbs. I think I believe if I recall correctly, it's a uh, hundred glass orbs to one crystal orb. Um, so, so you I... should probably go looking for the crystal. I think that's going to be the ingredient you're going to need to go and find. Right. Um. Cool. So I turn to the cat and say, so I guess then the ingredient, the ingredient that I'm looking for is the crystal. Got it. Hmm? Yes. Said what I hmm? uh, sorry, no, I was just giving the fish a chance to escape. Yes, what? Um, <laughs> um, you, you wanted to know what I wanted to know. That's and right. That the answer to that question is, I would like to know where I can pick up some crystal without paying crystal orbs for it. Ah, uh, yes, uh, crystal to refine for the device. Yes. Hmm. I'm going to draw a card. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we're doing this now, all right. 
Oh dear. So, this is a great card. This is an awesome card. This card is the Forgotten Prisoner. <laughs> it is the Apprentice of Mysteries. Um, its meanings are injustice, bad fortune, memory loss, something lost. Is there really such a thing as justice? The Forgotten Prisoner would say, would say no. How long has he been there? We don't know. And neither does he. His dank cell is wrapped in gloom and lost deep in some dungeon or high above in a locked tower. His stomach cramps with hunger, and his muscles ache from confinement. He has lost the world, and the world has lost him. As the apprentice of mysteries, he himself is a mystery. What's his identity? Why is he locked away? What crime, if any, did he commit? The forgotten prisoner most likely indicates that one has forgotten something vital, but it can, but it can also presage something, some coming injustice or simply a bit of bad luck. It is not a happy moment to see this card turned. So, um, the uh, the cat will will think about this for a moment, um, just sort of stroking its chin. And it says, so I think I remember a crystal that would be absolutely perfect for what you want to do here. Wonderful. There is a bit of a catch, however. Oh. It's just a question of where it's ended up at this point. See, uh, there used to be... Um, a... Um, This perfect, this perfect hunk of crystal that is kind of renowned for, uh, to a certain extent, it was well. This was from a uh, someone who was in a profession not unlike yours, uh, who they had dug it up on a trip. Um, when they were out in, I believe it was the silver. They were out under the silver, I think. It's an angelic crystal. Oh. Uh, to an extent. I, it's, or, well, similar. Uh, they didn't dig very deep down, so it's, I, it's, there was a question about the purity. But this would work fine for this. The thing is, uh, this crystal... It's difficult to piece together exactly what happened to it, but what I'm getting at is that when this, uh, uh, the jeweler in question who, uh, had possession of it, uh, passed on, um, the, uh, it was uh, just because his, um, uh, his, uh, building burned to the ground. Um, so... I think I know where the crystal would show up now. Probably, I, I feel as though, I, I have a feeling it is probably, you can probably get it there. Um, and I mean, it would be probably, it's not owned by anyone necessarily anymore. Uh, so you could probably get it, uh, but uh, you would, it would uh, be showing up in the, the home of the forgotten. Oh. Well, that's not ideal. I I think they uh, they do uh, barring that uh, they they do they do sell some. I uh, know. Uh, so that that's that's one possibility. Um, I mean, the only other. Hmm.
I think... I saw a set of, uh, of crystals, um, in, in this, in this building here, uh, that, that might make an adequate substitute. In the tower? Yeah, it was a different variety. It was green. Um, and as just sort of wandered in at one point, like, you know, as, as one does, uh, and, uh, is uh, that that gentleman that uh, lives here? Uh, she says, indicating the the bottom level. Um, I believe uh, had uh, had something like it on a shelf. I don't know if uh, it looked like it had been there for a while. Is the bottom level the foreman's apartment, or is that? Like a rented apartment. That's the foreman's okay. apartment. Okay. Mm -hmm. The foreman. So you could also possibly get one from him, uh, if you're. I, are you on good good terms with him? I I don't know. Not. I mean. I mean, we've we've had some crosswords from time to time, um, and mm -hmm. I I hear he's not doing very well. So. He was not pleased when uh, he found me in there. Yes. Yes, I can imagine. Uh, he's very particular about mm. what happens in that building um, and, a, and around it and under it. Um, I live in a mine, you know, and the mine is mine. And so there's digging and, and he worries that the digging is going to destabilize the tower, and I worry that the tower is going to fall on the mine, and it it makes for some delicate neighbor relations, to be sure. Oh, yes. So I'm not sure whether I would be more successful of escaping unscathed from his apartment or from the House of the Forgotten, but um, but I, I, I do need to go visit him, so... Maybe I can keep an eye out. Well, I can tell you the crystals that I saw, either of those two, should work for what you're doing. Hmm. All right. Thank you, Kat. Oh, Do you have a name? Oh, uh, Blue. 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 Yes. And she holds up her paw. I take her paw. And I, I do that thing you kind of do with cat paws where you rub them with your thumb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Yes, yes. <laughs> Do, are you the kind of cat that likes scritches? Sometimes. Uh, some people are less skilled at it than others. Um, so if uh, I, I, well, you, you have practiced hands. I think it would be all right. Yes. I scritch the cat kind of like at the side of the chin. Mm -hmm. you know, a little, like, oh, that's little good. Point. Oh, that's good. I've been trying to get at that for a while. That's That's really good. Well, it was a pleasure to meet you, Blue. Maybe oh, we'll have I... lunch together again sometime. Oh, I sincerely do hope so. These fish were wonderful. Oh, very good. I'm I'm glad. I'll try to look for something that provides more challenge for next yes, time. Yes, not very challenging, but they they were they did taste good, and that that often makes up for any other personality defects that they might yes. have. Yes. Mm. I don't know that that's been my experience, but. I will take your word for it. You don't knock it till you've tried it. <laughs> uh, of, of course, Blue. Um, uh, it's it's a uh, it's been a pleasure. Indeed, indeed. I'll, I'll be around. <laughs> um, and I'll get up and go into the house and make take out kind of this like a a banged bowl, like a blacksmithed bowl. Um, and I'll fill it with some of the geometric fruits from my garden. Um, nice. And uh, I will go over and go to the door of the foreman. And uh, and I'm going to make sure that I still have one of the two fruits from the golden sun in my in my bag. Um, and but not out. And I'll I'll tap on the foreman's door. Not too loud, because it's pretty late. Okay. 
Um, I wonder what the foreman is doing right now. I will find out. I will draw a card. Surely that will help us. Surely. It goes so well. <laughs> it does. It goes perfectly. So the card I've drawn is the Conspirator. Uh, the Conspirator is the Defender of Secrets. Um, its meanings are upheaval, hidden agendas, and gossip. I think we got this card recently. Yes, we got we this did. card last session. Yeah, um, it was so our going under the party card. Yes, okay. So, yes, here we go. All right. Excellent. Good, good. Um... I think if I recall correctly, and you can correct you can correct me on this if this is the case, was the foreman not also a maker? Yes. Okay. Alright, good, good. Um, let me But of a very different kind. Like we hadn't quite established if he was really part of the order of makers or not. Ooh. So I think that's up to you. He might be disenfranchised. He could be an apostate. Um It let's... could have been like all I want to make is Jenga towers. I know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Can you remind me what your arc is again? Your character arc? Growth. Alright. Okay. Are you just pulling up a thing real quick just so that I can remember it? There we go. All right. So, um, as you uh, kind of are sort of heading in, um, So you, you go in, you tap on the door. Um, you hear there is, you actually kind of hear it very drifting, this very, very light music, or this very sort of low music. It's kind of, um, it's kind of like, it's actually kind of like 30s jazz that you're hearing um, coming through the doors. So. And uh, then when you do that, there's like a... <laughs> Record scratch. Yeah. I wait. You get the sense that you kind of feel, hear kind of hear someone coming up to the other side of the door. Hello. Who is it? Uh it's it's Shaw Gamelon. What do you want? I... I'm... Nothing in particular. I just... Noticed that the... House has been... You just haven't been working as much lately, and I thought you might be unwell. I... I brought you some fruit. I've been busy. Ooh. Are you working on something fun? What's your angle here? My angle. Uh, we're neighbors. I was being neighborly. Um see I wonder how we how he's going to react here I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and pull a card um, but it's not gonna be for the purpose of divination um, okay. I'm actually gonna pull a card just to see what the number is on it so the conspirator will still be the in effect card yes technically okay. yes um, and actually I mean this is this is development mode, so it's not really a, the the, the oh, effects okay. aren't really yeah the the 
the pluses and minuses aren't really in play per se. Yeah, um, I just remember that the, for the conspirator card, that it meant that things that are secret tend to stay secret. Yeah. So I mean, there is there is kind of that thing. Um, so angle is sixty two degrees. Correct. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, um, so yes, uh, let me go up here and see what it is. Ooh, okay. No, Jim, don't look at that. Just look at the number. Uh, six. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, so. Yikes. <laughs> as your, yeah, so, um, <clears throat> He'll, um, he's, you hear a sigh, and then you hear, and then he's like, hang on a minute. And you hear him sort of moving further inside, and it's like maybe you can hear, you can almost hear him say something to somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. And then you hear him steps, his steps coming back. And, um... Hang on, there are puns happening in chat. I have to, I have to, I have to warn, I, I have to issue a warning. Um. <laughs> oh, wow. They must have been good puns because I totally froze my other computer. <laughs> I'll just uh, reboot yeah. my laptop while you're doing that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Okay. Anyway, um, the uh, no, but, but in any case, uh, no. As as he comes, he comes back. And you hear a series of locks being undone. Mm -hmm. The whole and uh, the door swings open, and uh, you see the foreman standing there. He's actually standing there in a bathrobe, um, but underneath he still has his overalls on. Um, <laughs> Of course. Of course. And he just sort of is looking he's like square fruit, huh? Uh, this one's actually a, more of a, a dodeca dodecahedron. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. But these ones are squares. I mean, the, the little pepino melons are still squares, but I'm definitely getting close on these dodecahedron berries. Uh, good, okay, yeah. Um, uh, he sort of looks down at the fruit. Um, he's like, do you want to come in for a minute? That would be lovely. Okay. And he sort of just backs up and opens the door just enough for you to, to come through. Okay. She walks into the house. He quickly slams the door closed behind you and then locks a couple of the locks. He, he turns around. I know I don't know if you know this. But I don't know if you know this, but there's a cat out there that keeps trying to get in. Oh, you yes, Blue. I met her. Was she giving you trouble? She's trouble. You can smell it. Oh. But, uh, yeah. She, she seems to be trouble for the birds. <laughs> oh, yeah, that too. And as you sort of go in, you see it looks kind of, um, so there is a, it's, so it's like part, part apartment and part, you know, ma like massive work area. <clears throat> like you can see over on the left-hand side of the apartment. Uh, you can see kind of his, uh, you know, it's, it's it's like a you know small uh, small table with a couple of chairs where he where he sits and a sort of a kitchenette out behind that. And on the right hand side of the apartment, there's a big drafting table, and there are actually like steel girders you can see uh, <laughs> visible on that right. side of the apartment, uh, where it looks like there is uh, potential for work being done, um, and. Um, he will, um, 
uh, he he will kind of just sort of uh, just sort of looking at it. He's, he's going to head back toward the kitchen, um, and he says, "You want coffee?" Oh yes, please. I'm definitely a fan of coffee. Um, All right. And uh, he'll he keep an eye out as I follow him back to see if I see any of these green glass things. <laughs> You're looking around. Yeah, but um, not very like only kind of precursorly and like a sort of evaluating the space scan. Okay. I am going to draw another card now. This is interesting. Okay. So the card we have now is the Relentless Rumor. Um, it's a secrets card. Um, its meanings are endless half-truths, incessant drives, ruthlessness. There is never a real truth in whispered rumors. Searching for authenticity in the clandestine, furtive words of a rumor is a fruitless task. And yet we still try. We listen. Despite the lack of complete veracity, though, this rumor is relentless. It cannot die. And a living rumor is one not just told and told again, but believed and believed again. Addiction and relentless drives are part of this. Needs and compulsions are strong motivators, and they never stop pushing. In divination, relentless rumor suggests an ongoing action. If one is hoping for resolution, there's none to be found here. It also indicates that there's something involved, a fact, a person, a device, a spell that cannot be entirely relied upon. Okay. You're looking around. Um... And you see, uh, over his drafting table, there is a shelf, and it has a couple of things. It's got, um, it's got a few little sculptures on it, and on the very end, you see this green uh, set of crystals. This this thing of, what is that called? I know I know a geode is like the. The round thing. Oh, I don't know. Like where it's like a, a cluster with two spikes coming out. Yeah, of it? yeah, a cluster with a yeah. few spikes coming up out of it. Okay. Um, those, those geologists at home that are crying out as to what exactly <laughs> this is, I thank you for for your effort. Um, <laughs> would that I could hear you. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, so you, uh, you do you you see you see what you know that uh, that sitting up there. Okay. Um, I'll just make a mental note and continue forward after him into the kitchen. Yeah. So he uh, he pours. Have you put down the fruit anywhere, or are you still? Um, holding I'm gonna the fruit? put it down and let, uh, bring it into the kitchen with me and say, "Where oh, okay. should I put this?" Oh, uh, yeah. You can put it on the counter there. Oh, very well. I'll put it on the counter. And uh, he proceeds to. He is. Um, he already actually has a, a pot made. He's got a coffee maker. Um, that, um, you know, he pulls out, you know, it's, it's a, uh, it's an, an etheric coffee maker. Um, and, uh, so he pours out a mug of coffee, um, he pours into a couple of mugs. Um, the, um, let's see. Is there a random coffee mug generator? I wonder. Because <laughs> that would be awesome. Would be uh, awesome. If there, if, if such a thing were. Nope, just something you can use to make your own, uh, your own mug. So the one that he has says "World's Best Boss." Um, <laughs> of course he does. What does he choose to give to me? Um, let's see. It's a, uh, it just says your image here. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, so he gives that to you and he sort of is like, yeah, you try to, you try to order this stuff and he sort of looks at your reactions and you try to order this stuff from Shadow and it just, you know. It never quite comes out right. Yes. Well, the communication's often a little unclear. He nods. And, uh... 
he sort of gestures to the um, he gestures to the to the table where there are you know a couple of chairs. Uh, I'll move over and sit down. Yeah. So you're all right then, just working on something new instead of the tower. You do see you do see drawings on there. He's like, yeah, you know, yeah, I got some stuff going on. I, I look at the drawings. Um, kind of, actually, as he says that, and you're look and you're and you're sitting in the chair, and what, as he says, I've got some stuff going on. And he's sort of sipping his coffee. He goes over and he actually um, folds a uh, <laughs> like a mat, I, sort of down over the over the uh, over the over the drawings. Yes. Um, you I do brief- that in my studio. <laughs> You briefly catch a glimpse of what looks like some kind of helmet, um, or perhaps you know something, some kind of thing with attachments on it, and he uh, he just quickly covers it up. Fascinating. Well, that's a quite a transition from you away from architecture. Must be exciting. Well, it's, it ain't a transition so much. I mean, I'm still, still an architect. This is just a kind of a another project I got to focus on for a little while. Very well. Yeah, I guess I just I noticed that the tower hasn't been moving much, and uh, I ran into Glinda, and she seemed to indicate that maybe you weren't feeling well. She likes to talk. She likes to talk, doesn't she? She does. She didn't really say anything. She just knew that we were neighbors and said that she thought you might not be doing terribly well. I thought I'd come check in on you. You know, we all live alone here, other than Karen, who I guess kind of lives alone. Oh, freaking Karen. (laughs) Very true. You know, she came by the other day and she was trying to trying to start up. she, she, She was trying to start up a summer camp. A summer camp. Yeah. Oh. She's the only one with kids. She's got a kid. Uh, the last time I saw her, she had two. And he kind of uh, almost does a spit take when you say that. Oh, God, they're multiplying. Yeah, I don't know exactly what's happening, but there were definitely two. But the second one turned and looked at me, like without Karen looking at me first, which the first one has never done. Yeah. Is that her kid? I'm not really sure. Maybe it's a friend? Yeah, I suppose that's possible. Well, as soon as she had to make friends with somebody sooner or later. <laughs> <laughs> the summer camp sounds very noisy, though. Are you kidding? Yeah. I mean, around here? I don't know where the hell she's going to put it. Maybe in the schoolyard. I thought the idea of a summer camp was you get away from school and all everything like that. You gotta, like, go out in the woods or some crap. Yeah, I don't know. I never really went to camp. <laughs> summer camp. I don't get it either. No, she's... Ever since she uh, she joined that church, she's had all these ideas that uh, what the hell she's thinking. Yes. Wait, what church? Uh, the one uh, the one down the street. Oh. Oh yes, the church. Uh. I mean, you know, I can appreciate. To a certain extent, wanting things to stay put. But, you know, she's been falling into these patterns. You know, it's like, I mean, not like she didn't have them before, but, you know. Now it's more so. Yeah. It's getting like clockwork. Which, you know, I guess isn't too bad if you want to set your watch by her or something. (laughs) That's true. This other kid, though, I got no idea what's going on there. Yeah. But we'll have to keep an eye out. Yeah. 
Well, it's exciting that you're working on a new project. Sort of thinking about working on one as well. Uh, but I haven't yeah, what kind of project? Anything. Nothing large. <laughs> and nothing that requires any more mining. You'll be happy to know. But, uh, except that I, I don't know. I may have to do a little bit of digging. I'll, of course, try to stay away from the foundation. But um, I'm looking for some crystal to refine. Um, and I just haven't been able to locate any quite yet. And I'm sure there must be some somewhere near that vein. He, he slowly lowers his mug. <laughs> um, actually, I, I think I'm gonna. Act, I think for this, just just in, just to gauge a little bit of his reaction, I am gonna go ahead and draw another card. But I'm only gonna look okay. at the number. Um, because I just want to see what happens. Oh, okay. I got an, uh, so you got an eight. Um, so he's like, what kind of crystal do you need? I think any kind would work, really. Just something that I could refine down. Actually, if I can make it successfully, um, it might be something you might be interested in having. I'm sort of thinking about making like a sketchbook that you look through. Do you know what a viewfinder is? Oh yeah, yeah, those uh, those kind of uh, chat skis that they got in uh, that they got in Shadow. Yeah. yeah. So what if you could look through something like a viewfinder, um, but maybe more like a monocle? So you just need one crystal. And you click, you, it would project out through that an illusion of what it is that you are thinking of. Like it would just portray the sketch. And then when you wanted to make a change to it, you would click it and it would take you to the change in your mind. But you could also click it backwards. You could undo changes that you had done and then go back forwards again. Any kind of thought? But I think visual thoughts. Visual thoughts, yeah, yeah. So yeah, who knows? Maybe if I could mine out two crystals, I could make us each one. Or I could try. I mean, you know, making. But it's within my skill level, like, I don't know. I just think it would be a great project. If you, um... So, yeah, it'd be a kind of thing you could, uh... Kind of, yeah. Are you um, all right? Yeah, I'm just thinking. So, I think I um, might have a source for you. Really? Yeah. I'll tell you what. You can... Uh, you can make, if you can make one of these for me and it works, then I can give you enough for two. Well, that would be amazing. Then I wouldn't have to do any mining. I could get started pretty soon. This is something you really think you can make, yeah? I do. I mean, it would just create an illusion. It wouldn't be a real thing that you could hold on to, but it would give you the chance to visualize exactly instead of sort of picking and choosing what you're visualizing. It would take your whole thing and visualize it. Okay. Then you wouldn't have to keep drawings on your wall. You could just keep this in your pocket. Well, yeah, 
that'd be useful for that too. Uh, what are you thinking of using it for? Doesn't matter. Um, yeah, hang on a sec. Uh, and uh, he goes over to his his uh, drawing board, mm -hmm. and he's just sort of he's, he's kind of glancing back over his shoulder at you while he's doing this a little bit. Um, and you I'll see sip my coffee. <laughs> you see he he moves it. He moves the drawing board aside a little bit, and he goes. Just pulls it forward from the wall a little bit, and he goes behind it. And then you hear him, um, sort of, sort of grunting as he hunches down a little bit. Um, and you hear like a couple of clicks, and then you hear what sounds like a small metal door opening. <laughs> Of course the foreman has a hidden safe. Of course. <laughs> and a moment later, you hear the door close. Uh, and when he comes out, uh, he's carrying two crystals that look like the one that's sitting on the shelf. Oh, awesome. Um, and he sort of pulls the, uh, pulls the, the drawing board back. And he sort of heads over to you. What do you do? I think those will work fine. I look at them. Do they look like they have few enough flaws that I'll be able to refine like yeah. a clear lens out of them? Yeah, actually, these look pretty good. And the more now that you have these right in front of you, you realize that the one sitting on the shelf is made of glass. Oh. Point for honesty. <laughs> Don't steal from your neighbors, folks. It never goes well. <laughs> cool. Um, so I uh, I look at them and say, I think these will do perfectly. I'll just need to pick up some uh, stabilizers in the morning, and then I'll be good to get started. Okay. Um All right. Uh, yeah. Are you sure you are all right? Yeah, I'll be all right. I hope, probably. Yeah, I'll, I'll be okay. Um, yeah, I got. Uh, I was just gonna say, if you uh, uh, if you have trouble finding finding a stabilizer over there, I probably I might be able to, to dig one up for you. Oh well, I, I. I don't have any stabilizers for the second step. I was just going to kind of gamble on that one. Oh, Christ. Um, no, hang on. He turns and uh, <laughs> he goes over. Um, these, these are not in the safe. Uh, right. he, he will go over to his work area. where He's got kind of a uh, sort of beyond the workbench. He's got kind of a one of those wooden work tables, you know, built it himself type deal. Right, right. Um, the dad, like, the dad tool table. Yes, he's got the he's got the dad tool area basically, uh, and uh, he goes and uh, he's like he he's going through. He, he has a few of those different uh, sort of tool container boxes, those metal boxes, tool tool boxes they're called. Uh -huh. uh, and um, <laughs> oh, but, but the one with a bunch of little drawers in it, right? Yeah, like the um, like the craftsman tool yeah, set. Yeah, the craftsman tool, and he's like going through opening a few drawers. And he's like, yeah, here we go. And he pulls out a uh, a stabilizer. I'm imagining uh, for this kind of project, um, I'm imagining a sort of a, a kind of a, lo a looped metallic thing. Um, okay. That um, has a couple of things. And he's like, picks it up. He says, yeah, I think you can probably make the, you know, you can, with, with probably a, a um, sort of a, little dial on it you can use to uh, expand or contract the bit so that it can like clamp on it kind of it's like a little clamp okay sort of a metal clamp and he picks it up and he's like here you go thank and you and he comes over yeah that ought to yeah that ought to that ought to work in case uh, in case things go south thank you um 
Well, I'll, I'll let you know how it goes. It should work pretty well. Yeah, so something like this should take uh, some like, what, about a week, week and a half, something like that, you think? About a week, probably. Yeah, yeah sounds about right. It's, it's only two steps of making, so if nothing goes wrong, it should be easy within a week. Um. All right. Uh, well, yeah, that, that, that'd that be good. Oh, wonderful. Um, I look forward to hearing more about your plans when you're ready to talk about them. I know how it is sometimes when plans are new, but, you know, yeah, well, we'll, people we'll... who make things and we are neighbors. It's always nice to have people to discuss. Yeah. We'll, we'll see how things go on, on this. It might not, I might not have to make it. We'll see. Great. Well, well, I guess I should go finish setting everything up so I can get started on things soon. You know, strike yeah, okay. while the iron's hot, literally. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Um, and he goes over and he unlocks the front door. Um, thank you for the coffee. Uh, th thank you for the fruit. You're welcome. I'll be in touch. Yeah, yeah. And he opens the door. She goes out. He immediately Goodnight. slams it. He, he slams immediately <laughs> slams it shut behind you. He's like, uh, uh, good night. <laughs> he, the door. <laughs> he sets the locks again. Okay. Um. You're like, how'd it go? Um, it. it <laughs> hello, hello, Blue. <laughs> um, I think it went surprisingly well. Ah, excellent, excellent. I, I mean, I, I was, I was waiting to hear if there was going to be the sound of buzz saws and screaming, but there wasn't. So no. I, I, it sounds like it went well. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Well, that's good. That's good. I'm glad. <laughs> well, um, you have a good night, Blue. She. <laughs> she. She sort of, she sort of uh, waves a paw at you and says. Oh, yes, you too, you too. <laughs> amazing, amazing. She sort of shakes her head and uh, starts uh, starts walking <laughs> away. Um, and then I guess I go over and call my elevator and take my creaky elevator down into my house. <laughs> um... And then I will get up, set up to uh, do everything tomorrow after I can pick up the other stabilizers. All right. Okay. Um, so, uh, is there anything else you want to uh, cover as we're, uh, as we're... It has been a long here. time. <laughs> <laughs> um... No, I think that's good. And then um, if you want, like, we can talk about this afterwards, but I actually think that some of the matrix rules are things that I could just do in Roll20 and record in OBS so that it doesn't have to go into other time. But we can talk about that later. Sure. Yeah, I mean, we can do that. Or, I mean, depending on what skill level you're looking at for, for this, if you... If you have enough to bring to bear on it, you may not have to roll at all for some of it. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Okay. Yeah. All right. That was awesome. Excellent. Yay. <laughs> cool, cool. We got a thing done. Um, yes. I do want to ask if at some point you're going to want to pop back to the party or not. Um, oh. Sort of curiosity. That's right, because all of her friends are at the party. I think that maybe, yeah, I think if everybody is still at the party, that she would get sort of set up for the thing and then probably go to sleep and wake up first thing in the morning. Um, and when she wakes up, her whole house is full of like ghosts of her friends looking around kind of lost uh, because she had an anxiety dream about the fact that she left a party 
and didn't say anything to her friends. And so the whole house is just full of like these illusions of people and like different sort of weird surrealist pieces of the party. And she looks around and goes, oh no. <laughs> and realizes that she's gonna have to swing by the party on her way to get crafting materials because she, otherwise her house is going to plague her until she resolves this anxiety. Yes. <laughs> All right, excellent. So we we shall see what ha we shall see what's been happening at the party when we uh, uh, resume the regular campaign on Saturday. Awesome. Um, <laughs> this will be interesting. Oh dear. <laughs> excellent. Very good. Yes, evil joy. Yes, so much joy. Um, all right. Um, let me ask you briefly, do you think that anything that happened today um, might uh, be candidate for uh, joy or despair for you? Hmm. I mean, I can see just as in general sort of actually getting somewhere connecting with your neighbor might be something worthy of a joy, but I didn't want to. Yeah, I, I mean, and I think it. coming up with a whole new idea yeah. might be oh, with yeah. the joy and like connecting on a, yeah, the connecting on a new level um, combined with talking about making with somebody new for the first time. Yeah. Yeah, that might be like on your on your that that might actually be like in in the rules somewhere possibly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um. <laughs> I can imagine. Um, but yeah, either way, um, you you you'll you'll get a point of joy uh, awesome. from from this session. Hooray! Excellent, excellent. All right. All right. Very cool. Well, um, I, let's uh, let us uh, move on to our outros. Um, so, uh, feel free to, if you have any final thoughts about the session, feel free to express those. Uh, otherwise, uh, just tell us where folks can find you. Um, okay. Hello, my name is Janaya, and I make art and play good games with nice people. And you can find me on Twitter at Janaya. Um, you used to be able to find me on Twitch at Janaya, but my account has been hacked. So please don't try to find me right there. Um, <laughs> yet. Uh, and you will be able to find me on Encounter Roleplay on Wednesday night for the final episode of Little Busters, our things from the Flood campaign run by Nomadic. And then back here on Saturday for Invisible Sun. And somewhere on Saturday, I think we're doing a Ryutama campaign on a Narcissus channel, but the time is not set. So follow me on Twitter and find out all the fun things I'm doing. Um, and as far as the session, this was great. Like it was just, it's it's kind of neat to do like a play, a character being in their own head session because it does all of this sort of bonus cementing of the character in different oh, yeah. ways. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it, and I'm sort of I'm really excited to to lean into the maker idea more and this idea of being an obsessive kind of gnome like I, <laughs> I just need to keep making things why do i go to work i go to work and make things so that i can sell things so i can buy stuff with which to make things yeah. like <laughs> yeah i'm just really excited about that like i love the kind of martial aspect of this character but that part's yeah. gonna be real fun oh yeah <laughs> this is very cool yeah i'm finding i'm really enjoying these development mode sessions or these side sessions just because there's that we get to to dive deep into more into the individual characters mm -hmm. and sort of what makes them tick and how they react to things. I'm really, I'm really liking this. This is very good. Great. Excellent. Um, so as for me, um, I'm Jim Ryan. Uh, you can find me uh, at other doc on both Twitch and Twitter. My website is Jim. Yes, that Jim.com where you can find my geek observation podcast and links to my various other podcasts, audio dramas, writings, and such. I've got links down below to my website, Twitter and YouTube channel. Uh, this week on the channel on Thursday night, uh, we're going to have the conclusion of our short Bad Streets campaign. Uh, that is a 1970s cop show powered by the apocalypse. Um, on the weekends, generally, I play video games. Uh, also on Friday nights, I am over on Off the Table playing in their 1890s Urban Shadows campaign. Uh, Sanguahona the Claiming, we're on the Midnight Crew, there are two crews. Um, and we're the better crew. 
uh, because we're willing to do what it takes to achieve our ambitions. And then the other crew is, is the, uh, the anti-heroes. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's that, that's been a lot of fun. Um, on Saturday, we have our Saturday nights, uh, we have our regular sessions here of Invisible Sun, the Edge of Paradox. Uh, and uh, we're going to see what <laughs> we're going we're gonna to see what's been transpiring at the party. Um, and uh, this Sunday, uh, for the last one shot of this month, uh, we're going to be doing Posthuman Pathways, and that is a uh, a GMless game that is it's a story game sort of about the about transhumanism and the future of our species, um, and what you have to give up as you try to work towards the future. It's, I think, going to be very both awesome and tragic, which is a delight for me. Um, and, uh, of course, uh, sign-ups currently are still going on for Amber Diceless. That's going to be the campaign, the short campaign we're running next month. Um, that's a game I've been running since the 90s, off and on. Um, and, and it's based, uh, based on the Chronicles of Amber by Roger Zelazny, but it's actually the way we're going to do it. We're going to kind of build our own Amber and chaos and various other forces that are out there um so that's uh, that's a thing to check out also for those uh who like the idea of uh of the shadow of reality that's very much a part of amber that's uh where i first where i first saw that idea getting kicked around um so that's there um i will say that uh posthuman pathways signups right now are uh are um um, alternates only, so the sign-up form is still there uh, for folks. But uh, yeah, at this point, uh, at this point, the uh, the seats have been filled. You can only re- I can only really get in two other people uh, for this one. Um, so it's uh, so uh, if you want to sign if you want to sign up, you can still do so. But it's going to be for uh, uh, basically it's if someone drops out. Um, so that's that's still open for folks technically, but it's uh, right now we've got kind of the seats full. Um, but as always, for anything that you sign up for here, beginners are welcome. Uh, so when we go to the end card, let me see. What shall we do when we go to the end card? Who's doing things? Um, let's see. Ah, sure, why not? Um, Unmade Gaming looks like they're starting a campaign of some kind. Um, I, I don't, I haven't, I haven't rated them very much. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, say hi to them. So feel free, if you wish, to hang on and say hi to them when we hop over. Um, but uh, in the mean, in the meantime, thank you very much for watching, folks. Take care, and I will see you all of a sudden. Farewell. <laughs>